Throughout the years I've been studying nutrition and making YouTube videos, there's one principle I keep going back to, which is nutrient synergy, vitamin balance. Not nutrient density, because more is not necessarily better. Making sure you're getting the right amounts of each of those vitamins and minerals. And it's one thing to say that, and another to understand the correct amounts when applying past diet and lifestyle for however many years, since you were a kid. Because if your health problem started when you were a toddler, when you were a teenager, that's how far back you're going. Yeah, you could start eating healthy, getting a lot of vitamins and minerals, feeling better, but what were you deficient in from your past diet? Are you able to estimate what vitamins and minerals you were deficient in? What about the ones you got too much of? My biggest mistake in this regards might have been overlooking the amount of magnesium needed. Of course, you know, no one can use a time machine to go back and feed yourself a proper diet as a kid. I might be nine feet tall, dancing with Colombian girls all day, but maybe in the next life. So a higher magnesium intake might have prevented a lot of my health problems. So let's take a look at some studies. So our first study is intakes of magnesium, calcium, and risk of fatty liver disease and prediabetes. We found that intake of magnesium was associated with approximately 30% reduced odds of fatty liver disease and prediabetes comparing the highest intake quartile versus the lowest. Magnesium intake may only be related to reduced odds of fatty liver disease and prediabetes in those whose calcium intake was less than 1200 milligrams per day. Magnesium intake may also only be associated with reduced odds of fatty liver disease among those alcohol drinkers. So one thing I've also been very vocal about since I started YouTube is my disdain towards calcium, how it's killing most people, causing so many health issues. This study lines up with that. Yes, magnesium will reduce your risk of fatty liver disease, improve your liver health, but only if calcium is low enough showing the antagonistic effect of calcium on magnesium intake. And since most people are so deficient in magnesium, they really need to eliminate calcium in the diet. So if you're one of those people who's chugging raw milk, I mean, yeah, you could have some butter, some yogurt, some kefir here and there, but you know, half a gallon of raw milk a day, increasing that calcium intake, you're destroying your body. You're calcifying your tissues. If you did that for five, 10, 15 years, how many grams of calcium do you have stored throughout your body in the hard and soft tissue that needs to be removed by reducing that calcium intake and increasing the magnesium? This could take years at a minimum to fix. Second study is magnesium intake is inversely associated with risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease among American adults. A total of 629 non-alcoholic fatty liver disease cases, NAFLD, were documented. After adjustment for potential confounders, an inverse association between total magnesium intake and NAFLD odds was observed. Compared to participants in the lowest quintile of total magnesium intake, the odds of disease was 55% lower among individuals in the highest quintile. This study suggests the higher cumulative intake of magnesium throughout adulthood is associated with lower odds of disease in midlife. So the takeaway from this second study is that increasing magnesium reduces the risk of liver disease. The more magnesium, the less chance you will have liver problems. Kind of shocking because you know how deficient are people in magnesium that the threshold is unknown, it was not reached. They're saying more is better. Up next, we have magnesium intake and mortality due to liver diseases. Results from the third National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey cohort. Overall magnesium intake was associated with a reduced risk of mortality due to liver disease at borderline significance. In fully adjusted analyses, every 100 milligram increase in take in magnesium was associated with a 49% reduction in the risk for mortality due to liver diseases. So similar findings to the prior study showing us how important magnesium is in the body that a severe deficiency of magnesium on its own can be a catalyst to certain diseases. Uh, this next study is more about the mechanisms why magnesium is helping prevent liver disease. Magnesium and liver disease. 
Magnesium is a vital cation that takes part in many cellular processes. Magnesium balance can be disturbed in multiple conditions, and differences in magnesium concentration can be responsible for numerous physiological and pathological processes. Magnesium deficiency is commonly associated with liver diseases and may result from low nutrient uptake, greater urinary secretion, low serum albumin concentration, or hormone inactivation. In turn, low magnesium content in serum and liver tissue can lead to the progression of these diseases due to disruption of mitochondrial function, defective protein kinase, PKC, translocation, inflammatory responses, oxidative stress, or metabolic disorders. Furthermore, magnesium supplementation can improve liver function in certain liver diseases. Uh, I read that quickly because it's boring, and you know, if I barely understand it, I don't expect most people to understand it, but you can look up that study, magnesium and liver disease, if you want that cellular understanding of magnesium liver interactions. Pretty interesting one to finish off. Inflammation interferes with the assessment of vitamin A status in magnesium deficiency. Magnesium deficiency in rats resulted in hyporetinemia without a significant decrease in liver retinol reserves, which is really weird. Uh, that means that rats are being considered vitamin A deficient despite having plenty of vitamin A stored in their liver, which means magnesium is needed to activate and mobilize vitamin A, and whether that's through the activation of other fat soluble vitamins D and K2 or directly on vitamin A. So what happens if you just consume tons of fat soluble vitamins for years and years and years without enough magnesium? You know, where are those vitamins going? It doesn't seem like your body can utilize them if it doesn't have the cofactor minerals, especially magnesium, and you're definitely not going to be as healthy as you think with all of those vitamins. Uh, so if you guys do want to support me, of course, you can check out frank for all of my businesses, including organ supplements, where we have a magnesium glycinate as well as magnesium oil spray. And I think in the next two or three months, we're going to have a whole uh, new product line, but those uh, current products will still be very relevant. If you haven't been watching my past few videos, uh, if, if you do purchase meat from Frankie Syringe Meat, please just send me an email stating that, hi, I'd like to purchase a live animal share to info at frankiesyrangemeat.com just so I'm covered legally in the future if you guys would like to purchase hot dogs or sausages or any of our new farm products. But that will be it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. I'll try to be back on track with the whiteboard videos. But as always, if you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. I mean, I could go on about this for hours guys but but if you do start incorporating magnesium uh, into your diet and lifestyle it, it may have to be tapered in at a pretty low dose 50 to 100 milligrams a day and then you can go up and up and up more and more as you tolerate it as long as you're sleeping well thanks again guys and i'll see you for the next video